It's not every day that we get to celebrate an animal, insect, or plant being removed from the endangered species list. But today, we are celebrating a plant native to the Carolinas that is once again blooming with fervor. Joining us with more is Gary Peoples, Deputy Field Office Supervisor for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Gary, we're glad that you could be with us today. Thrilled to be here. No place I'd rather be today. And congratulations. So tell us, what is this this plant that was once elusive to the Carolinas? Uh, yeah, the dwarf flowered heart leaf. Um, it was put on the federal threatened and endangered species list uh, way back in 1989. Um, at that time, there were only 24 known populations in the entire world. Uh, but in the ensuing years, a lot of people have worked really hard. And at this point, we've gone from 24 populations to 119 known populations. And that's across eight counties, and now they're across 13 counties. Uh, so a huge success. What does it look like? Um, <clears throat> it's a small plant, uh, the dwarf flowered heart leaf. So dwarf flowered, it has small flowers, heart leaf, its leaves are, are shaped like hearts. Actually for this plant, the leaves are the attractive part. They are heart shaped and they have uh, light and dark green areas. Uh, the dwarf flower, the small flower, uh, is a very showy flower. Uh, it's actually quite tiny and actually, um, it actually sits below the leaves and actually rests on the ground. Weird thing about this plant is uh, ants. Ants are actually part of the seed dispersal. So the flowers are at ground level so the ants can get to them. Oh, that's interesting. Why is it an important plant in, in the grand scheme of our ecology here? Um, that's a great question. Um, to kind of get at that question, I actually um, would like to talk about cars first. Um, everyone depends on cars to get to work, to take the kids to soccer, to whatever. Um, but most of us really don't fully understand how each car part works. So it would be foolish to open the hood of a car and begin taking out car parts, knowing that we rely on this car. Ecosystems are the same way. Uh, we rely on functioning eco ecosystems to give us the oxygen, the air that we need, the calcium in our bones, the iron in our blood. So it'd be kind of foolish of us to begin taking out parts of that ecosystem uh, this, the dwarf flowered heart leaf, being, being a part of that ecosystem. We may not know exactly how it fits into the bigger picture, but we know that it is important. And finally, Gary, if I can just ask you one more question. How did scientists bring this plant back from near extinction? Um, this is a really interesting story for this plant, um, because for this situation, you know, for a lot of plants, they occur on national parks or national forests, and we can work with the national forest or the national park. But this land was this plant was predominantly on private land. So over the past few decades, a bunch of private landowners have come together to really step up and conserve this plant. Often organizations that you wouldn't think of as big in endangered species conservation, like Duke Energy, one of the largest populations, is at a Duke Energy facility. Uh, there's a Facebook facility uh, outside Charlotte that has a big population. There's actually a landfill in North Carolina that has a protected uh, population. And private landowners, some of our best populations are on private land, and those private landowners uh, have just made the decision that this is uh, an important part of their natural heritage and something that they want to protect. So what we've seen is a ton of just a tremendously diverse group of stakeholders, many of whom you wouldn't think of as being engaged, but they've really stepped up and, and in this case made a tremendous difference. Well, we certainly thank them for being the stewards of Mother Nature, and this is truly something to celebrate. Gary, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. We're back after this. 